Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to get started with Fantastical, which is a calendar app for the Mac, iPhone, and iPad. Now, regular viewers of my YouTube channel may know that I am a big user of the Apple ecosystem, and I've actually been using the Apple Calendar for many years now. I really like the Apple Calendar, but recently I decided to relook at Fantastical, and I made the decision to switch and make Fantastical my primary calendar on my Mac, iPhone, and iPad. So I'm gonna walk you through how to get started and I'm gonna share some of my favorite features that convinced me to make that switch to Fantastical. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Now to get started with Fantastical, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is go to the flexibits.com website. I've included my affiliate link in the description below. If you would like to sign up using that link, I really appreciate it, it helps me help support this channel. Now I do wanna just start by talking a little bit about pricing. So if I head on over to the Flexibits premium pricing page, and actually when you buy a subscription, you're also gonna get premium access to their Card Hop app, which I'm not currently using, I don't have any experience with, but a nice little added benefit there. And I would recommend looking at the different features that you're going to get on the free and the premium version of Fantastical. Now, when I was recently making the decision on whether to switch to Fantastical, I really only considered the premium version. I was either going to sign up and pay for premium or I wasn't going to get it at all. The reason being that for me personally, when I looked at the free version, I found there wasn't enough value in the free version alone to justify switching. In fact, because I'm an Apple Calendar user, there are certain features in the Apple Calendar like uh, travel time and time to leave notifications applications, things like that, that I would actually be giving up that you do have to pay for with premium. And that feels a little bit, oh, I don't really want to pay for features that I already have for free. But there are loads of additional features in the premium version that I felt, yep, I'm going to get a lot of value from this and it justifies that, that additional cost. I know that some people are going to have a hard time justifying paying for a calendar, especially because you have great tools like Apple Calendar and Google Calendar that are available for free. But some of the features that I'm going to show you today, like calendar sets, the time zone support, again, I found those things really beneficial to me and how I like to run my business. And so I concluded that I can more than justify the $57 or so that I've paid for the year for Fantastical to get access to all those premium features. One final quick point on pricing, because you can download Fantastical on the iPhone, an iPad App Store or the Mac App Store, you can actually subscribe to Premium through Apple's in-app subscription service. However, in my currency, I found it was going to be slightly more expensive to pay through the Apple subscription, and it actually worked out better for me to pay online on the Flexibits website and pay the developer directly, which is great for them because it helps them avoid that Apple tax. So when you're ready to get started, you can try for free on the Flexibits website. And we're gonna click try for free here now. There we go. So you're gonna put in your name and email, of course. Make sure you put in a nice, secure, unique password. If you haven't seen my video on how I use one password to create really strong, unique passwords, definitely go ahead and check that out. And once you've created your account, you can go ahead and put in your billing details. If you wanna go ahead and sign up for premium, you will then get billed at the end of your free trial period. Once you've done that, head on over to the download apps and you can download Fantastical onto your Mac. With Fantastical now downloaded, I'm gonna press Command comma on my keyboard to open my settings. And I suggest firstly going to the accounts tab and this is where you can connect your different calendar accounts. So in my case, I have a few uh, accounts. I've got a Google account, which is where I, which I use for my work calendar and scheduling meetings with clients and things. I then have an iCloud account more for my personal calendar and I have a shared calendar with my wife. You can see I've also connected my Zoom account here which we're gonna be able to use to set up uh, Zoom meeting URLs and I've actually connected my Apple reminders in here as well. And so once you've got your account accounts connected, it's gonna take a few minutes to pull in all of those events but then you should see your calendar and your, all your appointments starting to populate in Fantastical. Now the first premium feature that I want to show you, and this is probably the main selling point of Fantastical for me anyway, is that we can create what are called calendar sets. And so a calendar set, I can, I can view my calendar sets up here. Think of these as different calendar views. So my main view is this one here called my calendar. 
these are all my appointments for my, my meetings and work that I have scheduled. And I have a different calendar set for Warwick. So one of the one of the members of my team, he has shared certain calendars with me in his Google account. And so I can basically see a Warwick's calendar here. And I've also got Lindsay on my team. I can see select appointments for her as well. And so I love this because it basically means I can view multiple people's calendars without it all clogging up one screen. If I show you, if I go to all calendars here, if I was just seeing everything all in one view, you can see it's a real mess. Some of this is mine, some of it's Warwick, some of it's Lindsay's, it, it's really chaotic and, and I can't work this way. But having the access to calendar sets really is cool because it means I can view each person's calendar and it doesn't distract me and, and get you know confused in with what I'm doing. Setting up calendar sets is really easy. If we go back to settings, go to calendars and lists here. And so you can create a new calendar set by clicking the plus, plus button here and giving it a name. Uh, I'll just uh, show you the ones that I've already created. So for my calendar, the main one that I work from, I've said that I want to see these specific Google calendar categories. So my pool, appointments, muse, pipe drive, busy, and holidays. Those are in my main calendar. And also actually some calendars from my iCloud account, you know, my social, sport, family calendars, and so on, all appear in my calendar or that the my calendar calendar set. The Warwick calendar set, this shows other calendars, again, from my Google account, but the ones that have been shared with me by Warwick. So I can see his work, block, and away calendars. And then Lindsay, I can see her Lindsay and busy calendars. And so once I have that set up, I can then toggle between these different sets up here. And yeah, again, this was probably the main reason I decided to um, sign up for Fantastical in the first place. Another key selling point of Fantastical and the premium version for me is that you can see on the right hand side here, I can set up a secondary time zone. So if we actually start on the left, you can see here's the time in my local time. You can see the current time down here, 2.10 p.m. And then on the right, this is the equivalent time in my selected time zone. So I'm looking at Pacific time right here, but I could change this to Eastern time or central, I could look at the time in the UK, and I can add other time zones in here. So this makes it really handy when I'm scheduling with clients, if I wanna look at when is an appointment at my time and how that translates into their time zone, I can just toggle the uh, setting here and it's just a really nice quality of life improvement thing, really nice having that quick access on my calendar. Now, there are a couple of ways we can input new events and create appointments. You can either click the plus button up here and you can use Fantastical's natural language to type out the details of your event. So I could say meeting with Warwick Palm and you can see by typing someone's name, it's actually going to intelligently suggest a contact. So I could click Warwick here and he's actually now being added as an invitee to the appointment. Uh, and then I could say, on let's say Friday at 5 p.m. for 60 minutes. So by putting in all this natural language, Fantastical is able to interpret what I've typed to block out the meeting here. Uh, and and it's, it's added those details, Warwick is the invitee to the event. So that's one way that you can put in um, new appointments. I actually prefer to just do the quick and easy click and drag with my mouse. It's just kind of what I've been doing for a while. So I'm used to it, you know, meeting with Warwick you know, I can, I can type the same thing in here. When it comes to adding a location, I can either type in a street address like 215 Kyle Road, and I can put in a, uh, an actual, you know, Google Maps linked location. And so that's really nice because it's gonna give me the driving directions and travel time to that location. So I really like that. Or if you have your Zoom or Microsoft Teams or um, Google Meet account connected, so I've connected Zoom down here, I can enable the Zoom meetings um, option here, and I can now easily schedule a Zoom appointment and it's gonna generate a Zoom meeting URL in my Zoom account. It's gonna add it to my Zoom schedule. So at you know this designated time, I can easily just launch that call from my Zoom account. So this is really nice. I can just click okay, and it's gonna put the Zoom meeting URL into the into the appointment. That's something that we didn't have on Apple Calendar that is a really nice, again, quality of life improvement in Fantastical. Like you can with most other calendars, you can set events up to repeat daily, weekly, monthly if you like. 
You can also add travel time for your appointments. You can set up alerts to be alerted before the meeting begins. They also have this option to add colors to your meetings. I haven't really played with this yet. I've color coded most of my events anyway. So green tends to be or is the uh, appointments that I have. Blue are the tasks that I'm working on. But you can use a custom color if you want. And of course, down the bottom here, I have the option to add attachments or I can add notes to my appointment as well. When you have an appointment coming up and you have a Zoom URL or a Google Meet or a Microsoft Teams URL in the appointment, you'll actually notice that this little join button on the calendar event. So I can just click that to quickly launch Zoom and join the meeting with one click. Another premium feature that I really like is the ability to create and use your own event templates. So if I click the plus button up here, you can see I've, I've got a couple here. I've only just started to experiment with this. Uh, so something that I do is I will sometimes, like you can see on Monday here, I will create an appointment which I will call busy and I kind of block off the day. And because I use Calendly for scheduling appointments, this is gonna mean that um, I'm not gonna allow any Calendly bookings on that day. It was Easter Monday on Monday, so I wasn't doing any, uh, wasn't taking any bookings. And so I have created this um, event template up here. So if I click on a particular day, like let's choose Thursday, and then I choose my no calls template, I can just, easily create that appointment with all the settings, uh, the, the details of the appointment that I've pre-configured and quickly create that new event. I have a lot of my work like checking email and things set up as recurring appointments anyway. So I feel like I've already taken care of a lot of that repetitive work, but this is a feature I'm really excited to play with more in the future. Another feature of Fantastical that I really like that convinced me to make the switch from Apple Calendar is that I can see my reminders from my Apple reminders here on my calendar. And it's kind of crazy that Apple doesn't do this. I've been saying they should do this for years and Fantastical have done it, so that's great. Um, but I can see some uh, reminders at the top here for some all day reminders. And I've got reminders uh, showing at specific times as well. If I go to this week, you can see here's one where it hasn't been checked off yet but I can simply tick that box right here on my calendar to mark that reminder as done. I can also create reminders by clicking that plus button and say, um, pick up milk. And I can switch this from the appointment type to the reminder type. And so now I can choose what reminders list I want to add this to. I can set priorities. I can specify uh, due times uh, or locations. If I go back to the Fantastical settings and then open the accounts tab that we were on before, click the plus button and you can find some uh, to-do services like Todoist that integrate with uh, Fantastical. Unfortunately, as an Asana user, I don't have that option. So I can't see all of my Asana tasks in here, but that's not a, a huge problem for me because I am I have Asana open all day anyway. Another nice feature which really convinced me and which you do get with the free version of Fantastical is it has really nice widget support for the iPhone and iPad. Number one, they give you so much more choice over the different styles and design and look and feel of widgets. Uh, I think Apple only gives you a couple and whereas Fantastical have created all these different designs so you can really pick the one that suits you. I find you can just see a lot more information with the widget as well, especially on the iPad where there's a bit more space. And uh, yeah, just another nice little quality of life improvement where they've just done a really good job um, putting that extra care and attention into that widget design. Now some other premium features that I really like and I'm gonna go through these kind of rapid fire now. Uh, number one, you can see it puts the weather at the top of the week view. So I can click on that little weather icon and it gives me a forecast for the day based on my location. I can see sunset, sunrise, all the typical things. On the free version, you get a three day forecast. With premium, you get an extended 10 day forecast. You can also add travel time to your appointments. So based on my location and my uh, method of transit, it's gonna add a little bit of buffer time to my event um, so that I can, I can see when I need to leave and how long it's gonna take me to get there. As I mentioned in the intro, we already had this on Apple Calendar, so it kind of feels unnecessary that we have to pay for it, but it is part of the premium bundle. With Flexibits Premium, you also get Apple Watch support. A bit like with the widgets on the iPhone, I find the complications on the watch more detailed and just have a nicer design. The final premium feature worth mentioning is here in the settings called Openings. This is a meeting scheduler. And so once I enable this, I can uh, set up my available hours, share a link with someone, and they can book a, an appointment with me.
Personally, I'm not using this feature because as I mentioned, we already use Calendly for scheduling our appointments with clients. We do round robin bookings, things like that. So we need something a bit more robust like Calendly, but you do get that scheduling feature as part of your premium subscription. So that is a look at Fantastical and how to get started, some of my favorite features, and ultimately why I decided to switch from Apple Calendar. I've been using Fantastical for a couple of weeks, nearly a month now. I really like it. I have it on my iPhone and iPad. And the nice thing about having your account set up with Flexibits is once you log in on that extra device, everything just kind of downloads. You may have to authenticate your you know, Google and iCloud accounts, but then all your settings are there and it makes setting up that new device really quick and easy. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.